just an introduction. My name is Crystal and I am the partnership coordinator for NaNoWriMo and I have Grant Faulkner. No, I'm not. I'm the par partnership coordinator for Pro Writing Aid and I have Grant Faulkner, the executive director of NaNoWriMo. I just love NaNoWriMo. I just hired myself, I think. Yeah, I was going to um, say. Yeah. What, what you, come on. Come on, Crystal. <laughs> Positions open. We need that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So... Yeah. Well, hello to everybody. I want to answer all your questions. I love talking about writing. I love talking about NaNoWriMo. So yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, while we wait for some questions to load in the Q&A box, um, yeah. I'll go ahead and ask you to tell us a little bit about the history of NaNoWriMo. Yeah, this is actually NaNoWriMo number 25. So a very um, appropriate question. And uh, I'm not the founder. People often call me the founder, but I'm not. Uh, Chris Beatty founded NaNoWriMo in 1999, except he didn't know he was founding it. Um, he just basically woke up one day and as a passionate reader, he decided he wanted to write a novel. And he did a rough estimate of some of the more slender uh, novels on his bookshelf. So think like Catcher in the Rye or The Great Gatsby. And he estimated that they were about 50,000 words long. And then he did some very complicated math involving algorithms and computers and realized that if you write for 30 days, if you write 1,677 words a day, which is very manageable, it's difficult, but it's manageable. You can reach 50,000 words in a month. You can write a novel in a month. And so he uh, sent out an email. I just read it yesterday, actually. I read the original NaNoWriMo email. It's on our blog and invited 20 of his friends to join him. And he already called it National Novel Writing Month just to kind of hype things. Um, but he always says he founded it accidentally. And so what happened is, is like he wrote in cafes and, uh, you know, after work with his friends and Afterwards, you know, he had only really planned to do it once, and they did it in July, not November, that first year. And he discovered all of these things that made it a really worthwhile experience, you know, creatively and socially and as a, a community builder. And so they came back next year and, you know, word spread and 150 people showed up to do it. And then the year after that, they did it one more time. And Chris uh, started this janky website. And he manually entered everybody who registered and he only could like 5,000 was the cap and he hit the cap. He registered 5,000 people himself. And, and then it just, you know, went viral and newspapers like the LA times and the New York times uh, started covering us. And we now have um, 500,000 writers who write with us annually, about 400,000 uh, during national novel writing month in November, uh, about 300,000, um, adult participants and about 100,000 kids and teens in our Young Writers Program. And that's something really to know about. Um, our Young Writers Program is in uh, about 10,000 classrooms. And it's really this magical, joyful program that I wish I had when I was young. Um, because, the you know, we, we it allows kids to write what they want to write and take and have fun writing. And I feel like that's the best way to learn writing, actually, if you're an adult, too. Like, it's we, we sometimes underestimate um, how valuable playfulness is. So that's the shorthand. I came on uh, as a board member in 2011. And when I came on as a board member, Chris uh, took me aside and said, hey, by the way, I'm stepping down and I think you should uh, apply to be executive director. I had no intention of being an executive director, but Chris saw something in me and I'm eternally thankful because it's been the best professional experience of my life. So I've been uh, executive director since 2012. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we've got one question. So, oh, two questions. All right. Mm, so all right. Um, our first question is, should I complete my whole draft before NaNoWriMo starts? Uh, no. I mean, you could, we, we want to meet writers where they are, first of all. But there are some kind of general um, NaNoWriMo rules. And I mean, I mean, rules with with some pretty big quotation marks. Um it's, we, you know, we encourage people to start a draft from scratch, you know, so if you can write 50,000 new words in a month, that kind of um, is is part of the thrill of it. But if you want to finish a draft and spend the month revising it, um, I think you can do that as well. Uh, so I don't like to say no to anything. Um, I, I really like, I think pe people should make National Novel Writing Month work for them. But I think it is really fun when you're starting with a new draft and starting from scratch and trying to reach 50,000 words because you you the what one of the wonderful things about NaNoWriMo is you feel the world writing with you. You know, and so when you get on uh, social media and follow hashtag NaNoWriMo, you'll see a lot of people posting their word updates or their writing challenges or their writing breakthroughs. And so uh, it's I find it really galvanizing just to have that feeling and to be involved in the mix and, you know, 
And, you know, to test a story out in that way, where you're writing with abandon and banishing your inner critic and uh, focusing on the progress of your story rather than the perfection of your story. Great. All right. Edwin asks, as a newbie NaNoWriMoer, how should I best prepare myself to participate in the event? Good question. There are so many different answers to that. And I think like uh, one is uh, creative preparation. And then one is the kind of more practical preparation for how are you going to write 1,700 words a day. And so on the creative side, uh, we have this kind of ongoing discussion about whether you should pants NaNoWriMo, meaning really writing by the seat of your pants with no plan. Plenty of people have been successful doing it that way or whether you should plan or plot your novel, which means writing some sort of, of outline or plan for your novel. And then we have this middle region called plantsing. And that's where I find myself. Um, and so it's it's really, NaNoWriMo is fundamentally a creative experiment. And I think you should approach it with that kind of openness, that it's an experiment for you to, to find the creative process that works for you. And so I, when I first started writing novels, I'd get an idea and I'd just jump in literally the day I got the idea and start writing. So I would pants a novel. I should say that pantsing a novel is one type. It can be a way to plan the novel. You can pants a novel, write the whole novel in NaNoWriMo, and then afterwards kind of think about it structurally and write an outline and then write the second draft according to that outline. But, you know, when I, when I, I I've pantsed many novels and, and each time I write a novel, I feel like I, I plan a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And so I can only speak to my experience. But when I've, when I've outlined the entire novel and really thought about how it ends, what happens to me, and I've heard this from some other writers too, is that I take, I take the fun out of it. Like I like to write for the mystery. I like to write towards the questions, not the answers. I like to have a novel be um, an exploration and an adventure. And if I outline it, I feel like it diminishes some of those characteristics of what makes writing actually meaningful and fun to me. But that's me. I've also talked to people who outline, you know, who write a 20 page single spaced outline. And they tell me that, no, they, that, that the outline guides them, uh, but it doesn't restrict them. And I think that's really key is to if, no matter what your planning tool Make sure that it's a guide, not a restriction. It's not, you shouldn't, your first draft especially shouldn't be a set of rules that are already predetermined. Because I think no matter who you are as a writer, the first draft is, uh, needs to be an exploration of some sort. You need to have fun with it. You need to take paths that you didn't anticipate because that's part of the, the creative joy, right? The creative meaning of writing is that, that like you sit down every day with a new self and new ideas. And, and that's what makes a novel really good is like pursuing some of those new ideas and really experimenting with them. So I, I hope in that long rambling answer, I somehow provided. Uh, oh, but I'll say about a little bit more about my process actually is that I try to have um, an idea by about now. And I try to spend the month of October really just daydreaming and taking notes in a moleskin notebook that I carry with me everywhere. And then I'll type in some notes and I'll kind of think about like plot directions. I won't write an outline, but I will start on November with an idea of my main characters, an idea of like the tone and the mood of the story, an idea of where it's going to go directionally. Um, and so I write to that direction. I always compare it to like, it's kind of like I'm foraging for food in the forest and I'm like a hunter who's like smelling and following, you know, the sense of things um, in order to find my way through the story. You know, and there's an old, I forget who said this, but there's an old uh, novel writing quote that, that you, your plot, all you need for a plot is to see as far as your headlights from a car, you know, so just see a little bit in front of you and you can keep going. Um, so this is all I'll say. I think the main thing is, is just not to inhibit yourself, you know, like you don't have to have massive preparation by November 1st. Plenty of people have just jumped in and written. So give yourself permission to, to, to do that. Awesome. I'm the opposite. I, the, the longer I write, the less I plot. I used to go scene by scene and now huh. I'm much more of a planter. Um, <laughs> Interesting. That's so cool. I, I haven't heard anyone say that before. Because here's my theory. My theory in life is that pantsers are fundamentally insecure about their process because they look over and they see plotters and they're like, wow, these people have it together. They've researched their novel. They've outlined their novel and I'm just winging it. So I always try to stick up for pantsers is like, don't be insecure. It's a valuable uh, part of your creative brain uh, to allow yourself to pants. That's very true. 
All right. Monica asks, is there a minimum age to join or how whole old or which grade do you suggest children be? So I guess this is more about your the YWP. Yeah, that's a great question because our Young Writers Program, you know, it is for all ages. We've had kindergarten kids do it and they actually just draw pictures uh, to tell their novel. But they have this deep sense of satisfaction that they've written a novel and that's wonderful. And so uh, our our Young Writers Program, uh, our our advice and guidance for, for teachers is to, uh, we actually have these um, exercises in our curriculum. We have curriculum, which is has been uh, designed to the Common Core uh, standards, and it's free. By the way, everything we do is free uh, because we want to have everyone to have access to their story. And so our, our curriculum helps teachers to, um, um, decide on age appropriate, um, you know, word, word uh, goals, word count goals. And so, you know, if you're, my kids did it when they were in like fourth grade, I think the first time in a, in a, in a, um, you know, a public school. And I can't remember what their, what their limits were, but everybody was personalized. So some kids might choose a 1000 word count goal and some people might choose a, like a 5,000 word count goal, depending. Um, so anyway, that's the, we, we kind of offer that teacher, teacher guidance to, 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 make it age appropriate and student appropriate. So there's no real right answer. And that goes all the way through high school really as well. The important thing is really to write. Alice asks, um, and this is a question that I definitely wanna know the answer to. I'm always so intimidated about the idea of writing for a month straight. Any advice for how to get through the whole month, especially the middle of the month slump? Yeah, you know what I think I, um, so yeah. so. I'll, I'll focus on the month slump. I think I forgot earlier to tell the, the advice of pre preparing for NaNoWriMo um, at the practical side, like making room in your life. And when I'm asked to like for the one key to success for NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo it's actually time management. And that's because a lot of people sign up and they start writing and they kind of just think that time's going to happen to them. But to write 1700 words a day, it takes most people around two hours, hour and a half or two. And so that's a big chunk of time for your day. And so I advise you to really think about how you use your time and think about how you're going to open up that two hours a day to write. And so um, one way to do that is to go on a time hunt and to keep track of how you use time for like a whole week and see, um, you know, is it a matter of like writing for 15 minutes at your lunch break at work or writing for a half an hour uh, in the morning if you can squeeze it in or, or, or later at night? Um, is it a matter of like doing power sessions on the weekend and writing for five, six hours? Some people do that, uh, but come in with a time management strategy that will make you, you more successful. And then to get to this question, the muddy middle is super tough. Um, like every writer, I think hits, hits that like a uh, wall, like halfway through their novel in the middle of November. And as, as the, the questioner said, the, it's tough to write for 30 days. It's, it's, it's tough for me to do it every year. It's really challenging. And, um, I, th I think like there, and, and the thing is muddy middle, isn't a singular phrase. You're going to have many muddy middles in your novel, especially if you write it beyond, uh, November. So I'd say, uh, I think like that, um, one, we, we offer like community support. So we have uh, what we call municipal liaisons, volunteers, literally a thousand of them around the world. And they organize in-person writing gatherings and in their communities and, and increasingly hybrid as well, like Zoom gatherings like this. And so I think that there, there can be like a creative momentum that can be ignited and um, sustained and moved forward by your creative community. And that's why we have um, these volunteers. And, you know, and, and and online as well, like just getting that encouragement from other people can help you keep going. Uh, I think it's fine to step away from your novel mid-month and uh, not step away for a long time, though, because you don't have much time to spare. So maybe uh, step away for just like a day and kind of recharge, uh, do something that's good for yourself, take a walk, um, you know, read, uh, do something to kind of get your thoughts flowing. I, I really like reading actually, like, because I can like look at a novel that's like mine and get ideas from it to move forward. Um, also, a lot of people like think they have to write their novel chronologically. You don't, you can skip around. So if you're stuck in the middle, uh, maybe write the end or maybe write uh, some scene that's calling you or just do a character exploration. I think the main thing is to keep writing and not stop. Um, so often people, when they hit the wall, they stop. And once you stop and fall too far behind, then you say, I can't catch up. 
and and never say that because uh, even if you can't hit the fifty thousand word count goal, see if you can set a new goal and keep going. You know, to 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 either finish your story in November or beyond. And I probably did not say everything I could have, but I feel like I rambled for a while. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs> that was great. That great advice. Uh, definitely, I definitely don't write chronologically anymore in Nano right? So it's um, very helpful. Do you? Do you write like when when a scene is calling you? Do you just jump ahead and write that scene or chapter? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And then and then I fill in around it, and it it helps. It, it helps keep me motivated. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I think I think especially with the first draft, um, it's it's really good to keep keep that momentum going, really, and think about ways to keep it going. All right, Chrissy wants to know, what would you say the benefits of registering for a NaNoWriMo are versus just doing it yourself? Oh my, many benefits. Uh, you'll be on our email newsletter newsletter list or our email list. So we'll, we have uh, many fantastic resources that we're gonna send you uh, to help you uh, both plan your novel uh, if you want to plan your novel and write your novel. Um, so we, boy, we have a bunch of wonderful uh, authors who are gonna send pep talks out and, um, and yeah, I, I encourage you to also just because it's a way to join the community um, and, and and be a part like so, so you can attend these community uh, gatherings that I mentioned. Uh, we have a bunch of tools on the website so you can track your word count on the website with our word count uh, tracker, which is like the single most motivational writing tool on the planet. Basically, uh, what you do is you put in uh, your 50,000 word count goal and then you you put in your daily word count progress and you see that bar chart going up. And, and literally, like I've read articles about this with um, the idea of a psychological reward, the implicit reward of watching your word count go up is more rewarding and more motivating than an, than an external reward, like giving yourself a massage or a spa treatment or whatever it is that to, to reward yourself for, for a goal achieved. Um, but, you know, beyond that, uh, you know, I think it's important to register just to show support for NaNoWriMo itself, the organization. You know, um, we are a nonprofit. We do all this to to everything's free, as I said, and and we would love your support, whether your support is just signing up to help us with our with our numbers, but also a small donation is is that's how we run. Actually, we have I was talking before this with with Crystal and we have a one point three or four million dollar budget every year and we serve 500,000 writers. And so that that means we're we're helping each novelist for under three dollars. You know, it's a, it's a, it's very it's the most cost effective nonprofit I know of. So we appreciate your support, uh, whether you write with us or you donate to us. Great. Uh, yes. Plus, you get a nice little halo if you donate. So that's there you always go. my. <laughs> that's right. I'm like, and I yeah. can't not have a halo. Uh, <laughs> Rachel says, "Would you please compare the novels you've written during NaNoWriMo versus those written outside of NaNoWriMo with regard to quality and need for revision? Also, do you find prep for NaNoWriMo makes a difference in the quality?" Yeah, I can only speak personally to this, so I think everybody's going to have a different answer. Um, certainly, uh, my NaNoWriMo novels are a bit messier than than the novels or stories I wrote outside of NaNoWriMo or outside of that creative process, but that messier isn't necessarily bad. I mean, there's a saying, uh, Chris Beatty, the founder, said, um, you know, with NaNoWriMo, you're writing for quantity, not quality, but you end up getting both. And uh, I think most people I've talked to is that they're, they're sometimes fearful to open up their NaNoWriMo draft. But then when they do, they see all these gems and these wonderful, um, wonderful parts of their story. Um, and so I think there there is, you know, I would say NaNoWriMo is kind of like improv acting. It's improv writing. And so you you release the inhibitions and the naysayers and the inner critics. And by doing that and, and focusing on progress, um, you oftentimes open up other pathways, um, other storylines, um, other types of language, actually, than you'd use otherwise. So I guess I'd, I'd just say, you know, re revision, you, with every revision, you're revising mess. You know, every rough draft is messy by definition. And this goes for your very favorite writers and your most precious writers. They also write very rough drafts, very messy drafts, and they have to revise them and clean them up. And, and revising isn't really just cleaning up a draft. I, I like uh, Peter Ho Davies wrote this wonderful book on revision. And he says revision is, you know, just getting to the root of the word. It is re-envisioning your story. 
And so when you're doing revision, you're constantly re-envisioning your story. You're constantly writing your story. So the writing doesn't stop with revision. So I hope that answered the question. Did I hit, was, were there, was there a second part there? Sorry, I'm coughing. I think you, I know, I think you answered it, but um, all the parts of it. So that's great. Um, guys, keep bringing your questions in. Anything you want to know about writing or NaNoWriMo in general, Grant is an expert. So um, <laughs> <laughs> keep asking us some questions. Um, I'm seasoned. Got, <laughs> yes, seasoned. <laughs> um, so uh, I was wondering if you have any like inspirational stories, moments that stand out to you that really, um, you know, tug on your heartstrings as an executive director, um, any just great moments in your career with Nano? Gosh, so many. I mean, um, I'll tell one on the Young Writers Program side and one on the um, adult side. Um, and we get these stories every year, but this um, mother sent me an email uh, recently and her son um, is autistic and he I think he was you know, he was in middle school and uh, his teacher announced that they were going to do NaNoWriMo and he, he he hated writing and he did not want to participate and um, he he was putting up a big fight uh, but he did it and the more the month went along the more he enjoyed writing until by the end of the month like he was just carrying around the notebook with his novel in it everywhere he went and he was working on it, you know, and it was just a source of great pride to him. And so it was a huge breakthrough for him with writing. And so when I've when I've talked about the Young Writers Program and what I see as its benefit is that so often, you know, kids are taught the rules of writing, like grammar rules. Um, they're taught the kind of mechanics of writing and, and they have this feeling that there's a right and a wrong. And, and of course, there is on some level. But writing is fundamentally about expression, right? It's a, it's writing is telling stories is our fundamental. We are, main, you know, we're ma meaning making creatures. That what, that's what we do as humans. We, we seek meaning in the world. We seek to make meaning. And our primary way to me make meaning is through our stories. And so the Young Writers Program is its fundamental uh, premise is that kids should be able to choose the story they want to write. So they have agency and then to write it with the, the, the full energy of their imaginations, you know, and then, and then once, once they've done that, I mean, that's the magic. And then they're interested in learning grammar. They're interested in learning how to write better because they've experienced, you know, the joy of telling their story on the page. So, so yeah, we, we hear stories like that all the time from, from teachers and kids and parents um, on, a, on the young writers program side. And then on the adult side, I'll just tell this story. Cause I always found it charming. Um, Jennifer Alban, who wrote the novel Cruel during NaNoWriMo. Uh, this was about, I think she published that about 10 years ago, but her husband used to joke with her that she was, um, her, her obituary would read the author of the most first chapters in histories. So she always, she would write the first chapter and get really excited about it and then hit the wall and stop writing. And so NaNoWriMo helped her go beyond that first chapter and write to the end. And, and I think that, you know, I mean, uh, that really speaks to to something valuable at NaNoWriMo. And so the person who um, asked the question about the muddy middle is it's so focused on progress and so focused on not being precious about your prose that it helps people get over those humps when they might ordinarily quit. Um, and so I'm really proud of those stories. And I'm also proud, uh, yeah, I mentioned a publishing story. And the reason I say I do that with reluctance is because so many people also do NaNoWriMo, like just for the sake of being creative for a month. And I think that that's really valuable. You know, NaNoWriMo is an invitation to make creativity a priority a month, which most of us as an adults, creativity is not our priority. I think the the sad thing that happens is, is that creativity falls lower and lower and lower on our to-do list. So that's what it tends to do. And I was, um, tell this, let me think what the Picasso quote is. Um, Every child is born an artist. It's just a challenge to be an artist, you know, once you grow, grow up. He said it much more eloquently than that. But I think that NaNoWriMo helps you be an artist when, when you grow up. Like, why, why, do, why should we lose our sense of playfulness and storytelling just because we're adults, you know? But I think many of us do. So uh, those things are important for our lives. Awesome. Can you talk a little bit more for people who are new, how the community aspect works and how, what are all the ways that you can connect? How do the regions work? And yeah, so you know, it's and it's really beyond us because I, so many people do their own NaNoWriMo groups separate from us. But what you do is you sign up uh, on the NaNoWriMo site, NaNoWriMo.org. 
And when you sign up, you you go to the region page or you'll be guided there and you home a region. So, so Crystal, you're in Dallas. So if you were signing up new, you would go to the site and sign up for the Dallas region. You can sign up for more than region, like we more than one region. We have people who like travel for business and they'll sign up for multiple ones. And these days with um, with Zoom, um, like I went to speak to the Naperville group and there were, there was a person from Brooklyn there and she just happened to uh, find an, you know, a, she liked the people in Naperville. <laughs> so there's no restrictions on ge- geography about where you live, but most people sign up for the one in their local community. And that's because the premise of, of this structure, you know, started when people before Zoom. And so people were gathering in cafes and bookstores. And so when you sign up and say, Crystal, in, in, in Dallas, and you sign up on the site for that, then you'll start receiving uh, emails from the local municipal liaison. That's the word we give our volunteers. And you'll see a calendar with all the, the in-person writing events uh, there. And, 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 and there's a chat. Um, so there's just, just different ways to connect locally on the site. Um, but you know, people, and, and, and some, some people go beyond the site. They're like discord. There might be a discord for Dallas. Uh, there might be a face group group for Dallas. There might be both, you know, so, so some things go beyond our site, you know, in terms of the building that community. Great. I think it's really important to join the community. It's been life changing for me uh, to connect with other local local authors. So definitely sign up and join your community and Uh, put yourself out there. It's great fun. Can you tell a little bit more since you've had that experience? Like how what what has happened at the community events you go to? So um, we do mostly do writing sprints um, Uh and um, uh, you know, times where we all write together and there's something really magical about everyone's creativity flowing at once, you know, and um, it, it's really inspiring. Um, and there's people there that when you're in a slog, you can ask a question like, how do I fix this? Or they'll motivate you. Um, and just meeting other people who have um, who holds storytelling as a core value is really great. And so some of my best friends are, are um, that I talk to every single day are from NaNoWriMo. And it was so meaningful to me that I actually served as municipal liaison for three years. Oh, wow. So um, I um, eventually stepped down uh, when I became a mother, but uh, it was um, really important to me to help inspire, especially the new writers, um, the people who really have participated, but haven't won before and uh it's just a really great connection uh Mm -hmm. so i think that um it's i think that if you aren't utilizing your community you aren't getting the whole nanowrimo experience yeah i would say you know municipal liaisons like you crystal i mean there are heroes and they're the face of nanowrimo in their communities when i said that we had this you know 1.3 million dollar budget or whatever like we have a staff of 10 but we have a a volunteer force of eight nine hundred or so um, so yeah, so that's just amazing. And when I, I just want to pause and, and, and when you said, um, a writing sprint, uh, define that for people, how would you define it? Yeah. A writing sprint? So a writing sprint is where you set a timer and it's very helpful because it really helps you, uh, lock away that inner editor and you just try to get as many words in as you can in 15 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, you take a little break. Um, everybody finds their, their sprint sweet pot spot. I really can't do longer than 20 minutes, um, mm-hmm. but it really keeps me motivated. Um, and then if you're participating with other people, you can add, I've uh, attended an event where someone had little prizes for for uh, everyone who just little dollar store prizes for everyone who won a sprint. Uh, so that's a lot of fun too. I have on that note. So Crystal, you tell me, well, first, I don't believe in writer's block. I believe that sometimes our life circumstances like trauma or illness can, can cause us not to be able to write, of course, um, or depression. Uh, but the reason I don't believe in writer's block is that like you, I've read, I've led so many writing sprints. Uh, I mean, hundreds, if not a thousand of them. And I've never, and and I usually give a prompt at the start, and I've never seen a person not be able to write. And so this to me is like scientific evidence that that writer's block doesn't exist. And that we all have, we all have stories in our head that are just waiting for the door to crack open and then they come gushing out. And that's kind of the amazing thing about writing sprints is that 
I'm always uh, pleasantly surprised by what comes out. Like this is not a planning exercise, right? This is a pantsing exercise. And it's this creative exercise that you don't, you know, I don't sit around and, and, you know, plan what I'm going to write in that 20 minute period that you say. Um, and that's, that's the kind of interesting, interesting joy of it, you know, and, and our founder, uh, Chris Beatty, you know, his book is called No Plot, No Problem, meaning the no problem part is that you've got a plot in you, you've got a story in you, you've just got to open the door and let it out. Do you have any favorite resources besides no plot, no plot, no problem that you would recommend uh, to people, whether online or books or anything? Yeah, like I mean, we also have uh, Ready Set Novel, uh, and these books are in the Nanorimo um, store on our site, so you can just go to the Nanorimo store. Um, and Ready Set Novel is more of a workbook, so it helps you plan your novel. Uh, it's really fun. Um, we also have uh, this isn't books, but we have a whole what we call Nano Prep curriculum and so it's happening right now and you, you know it's six weeks before NaNoWriMo and each week there's a different theme like characterization or world building um, or even time management and so th that resource is a standing resource on our site it's not a published book but but you can you can jump in at any time uh, to do that it's totally self-directed um, other writing books my gosh uh, well well my book's also in the NaNoWriMo store it's called pep talks for writers and it's 52 um essays on on some aspect of creativity and 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 the just the it's it's meant to not only help you get through NaNoWriMo but the reason there are 52 essays is it's designed to help you write year round um but beyond that like I I have so many I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot this back to you too Crystal because there's so many great writing books out there I love how you go into a bookshelf and writing is the only art where there's like hundreds of books about how to do it and and how to think about it um I love Stephen King's um on writing um, I mentioned the Peter Ho Davies book on revision, which I love. Um, uh, Anne Lamott's Bird by Bird is a favorite by many NaNoWriMo writers because it focuses more on that kind of uh, creative process side of writing. Uh, and so with Natalie Goldberg's uh, Writing Down the Bones is really good. Um, I actually, wait, do I have this here? Yeah. Um, try not to disturb my dog. When I'm planning for NaNoWriMo, I like to use this uh, Save the Cat for novelists. Oops, it's not being shown very well because of my blurry screen. But uh, Save the Cat writes a novel written by Jessica Brody. She's uh, um, been a longtime NaNoWriMo writer. And the reason I like it is so Save the Cat is a, a screen uh, screenwriting book to start. And it helps with plot points and beats mainly. But Jessica wrote this book for novelists, and and I like it as a brainstorming tool. So what I'll do when I said I like kind of daydream about my novel uh, in October, sometimes I'll just read this book uh, because she does this interesting kind of dissection of other novels, and it just helps me like think more structurally about my novel because I I'm not really a plot like I'm not if I have an insecurity about my writing it's plotting, and it's structure, and so like Je Jessica's book just helps me brainstorm that a little bit. Um, and sometimes I'll read it for later dra drafts as well, or just kind of poke around in it. How about you, Crystal? Okay. Do you have any favorite? Um, I really love Janice Hardy's um, fiction university books, like Understanding Conflict and Understanding uh -huh. Plot. Um, I think they're real easy to understand, but just full of great information. And then the writing book that I swear by, um, which will help me when I'm writing a first draft if I get stuck, but it will also, um, it, I also use it a lot in revision, is The Emotion Thesaurus by yeah. Angela Ackerman and Becca yeah. Puglisi. Um, so those are those are my two favorites uh, for sure. Um, uh, Joan wanted to know, what's the name of the book you said about revision? Oh, it's it's written by Peter Ho Davies. And it's it's published by Gray Wolf Press, and they have this wonderful series of books called the Art of series. And so they'll be the the art of I don't know the art of mystery, and this one's called the Art of Revision. And uh, we actually did Nanorama has a podcast called Right Minded. It's a weekly podcast, and Peter was on um, the podcast earlier this year, and uh, he was one of my favorite um, podcast guests. We have we always have an uh, uh, an author on every every. Uh, episode and uh, just we just had some amazing guests and so Peter talked about revision and I found it deeply knowledgeable and inspiring and the book is just a slender little volume all the art of series are really short but really meaningful yeah great um someone wants to know if they need to have a writing buddy for NaNoWriMo so you you define who you are as a writer but I'll say you know before NaNoWriMo 
I was a very solitary writer. And, uh, you know, I guess that was fine. But one thing NaNoWriMo has done for me is to open myself up to a community of writers and really make me appreciate the way a community contributes to me as a person and as a creator and as a writer. And in so many different ways, you know, like I keep thinking, like, like once you have a community of support around you, you don't even really, you take it all for granted in so many ways. You know what I mean? Like you're constantly being helped in ways you might not even recognize because it just becomes such a natural part of the fabric of your creative life. So I would advise you, I mean, to, to, to buddy someone on the site or beyond the site, it doesn't have to be on the site. I mean, I have writing buddies on the site and I check in with them during NaNoWriMo. The great thing about the buddies on the site is that you can also see if they're participating and what their word count is. So I think that's pretty cool. And you can communicate with them directly on the site. But yeah, I think I think like any experience, like when you share it with somebody else, I mean, I think, and I think that's why you know, NaNoWriMo has such a vibrant community is everybody's shared it's like climbing a mountain everybody has climbed a mountain together you know they've gone to battle in some way together and they form these deep and really unique bonds as a result and so i think i think crystal can speak more to this as a as an ml kind of witnessing this in in real life but i i, I would um advise anyone to open themselves up to that community and a community can mean just one buddy absolutely absolutely so I'm cheating a little bit on this next question because I do know the answer because I have a friend that <laughs> was uh, working on this with NaNoWriMo. But um, what is NaNoWriMo doing um, to promote uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion? Yeah, we're doing a lot. Um, and if you want to see uh, everything we're doing, uh, I'd go to uh, the page is called Our Values. It's in the navigation and it's uh, also in our footer. There's a link there. And so we talk about our whole strategy and we have a document with our strategy and all the tactics that we're doing. And so it's 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 really an immense and ambitious document, uh, but you can see everything there. Um, like it was interesting, like this year, uh, our, our nano prep resources, for instance, um, we took a particular um, looked at them in, in order to to decolonize them and to to make sure they were to open up to, you know, there's there's obviously a Western culture type of storytelling that we all, you know, have absorbed without even really thinking about it. Uh, but there are other ways of telling a story. So we didn't want that to be the dominant storytelling. You know, most people, when they're teaching writing, they they teach it all to the Western culture kind of rules. So we we really open things up in that way with our nano prep resources. We also have things like, um, you know, affinity groups on our, our forums. And we um, we host uh, virtual write-ins. Um, you know, we have a, a one, one specific virtual write-in for writers of color um, and for LBGTQ plus writers. So, so yeah, we're constantly trying to, in fact, like, you know, all those numbers I, I was um, kind of tossing around that we have 500,000 writers each year, which is impressive. And I love those numbers. And I love that we can help everybody realize that their story matters. And that's actually key too, is our, 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 our mantra is your story matters, you know? And so that, we that is what we do we try to help everyone realize their story matters and that means including more people and welcoming more people in and that's why we're free too is to be more inclusive and to not put any barriers between people and their stories yeah so that's the short answer but please go to the web page and 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 read more because we we talk about what we've done and what's been challenging and we give a whole history of that too okay great uh, thank you for that. Um, last chance to pop in any questions um, that you might have in the Q&A box. Um, Grant, if you could give one really just great piece of advice, if you had to narrow it down, what would it be? Gosh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I got distracted by looking at everyone's chat here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so one piece of advice I want you to do this too, Crystal. I'm going to put you on the all spot. Right, all right. All right. Um, and is this for NaNoWriMo specific or just writing in general? Um, let's say whatever you prefer, but I was, I was I'm going to do both. Okay. All right. I, Sounds I, good. I just, I just thought we could do both. You know what? I was just asked this yesterday. I had a, a, a zoom call, a one-on-one -on -one call. Somebody won it in a, in an auction. And um, she asked me whether, you know, if she was deciding between ideas that she should do uh, take, taken into account commercial considerations like which which story was was more marketable you know and that was such a good question uh because so many writers do want to write and have a publishable story 
And my, my answer, though, is always the same, is that I feel like the best writing happens when the writer is passionate about the idea that they're writing about. So, so don't choose an idea that's like marketable or that you think is going to make you famous or make you a lot of money unless you feel passionate about that idea. And, and part of the reason I say that is like, one, when you're passionate, you're going to write better you're going to be more vulnerable on the page. And I think being vulnerable on the page is, is really what makes um, readers enjoy a story, you know, is when they can have that human connection to somebody else, the author. Um, but the other reason passion is really important for NaNoWriMo and beyond is that if you're not passionate about your idea, you're probably going to quit writing it. It's hard to wake up every day and do something that you're not passionate about. And to write a novel, whether it takes one month, one year or five years, you know, when I said muddy middle is not singular, it's plural. And, and, and when you're writing a novel, you're always facing obstacles. You're always like questioning yourself. Like in, writing a novel, unfortunately, as much as it's joyful, it also breeds self-doubt and self, um, you know, ch challenges yourself to, to decide, do I want to dedicate all this time to this project? But I think when you've got passionate passion, when you've got a reason to write it and a purpose, that's going to help you get over all those hard spots. Uh, it's also going to help you go deeper into your story. And that's where I think so much meaning lies, you know, like the deeper you go into it, uh, you're discovering things about the characters and their story, the world and yourself. So, you know, think about why you want to write this novel and, and, and really keep that in mind the whole, the whole journey. How about you, Crystal? Oh, you know, I, I really say join the community. You're like, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't succeed without the community of other writers. That's, um, and that goes for NaNoWriMo and beyond, you know, find mm -hmm. great writing buddies, um, find um, a critique group that you trust, um, any of that. It's, it makes the journey so much easier and so much more inspiring um, mm -hmm. when you have that community aspect. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. We have one final question. Uh, hmm. Do we need to work on a single project during NaNoWriMo or can we switch between different writings as I often get confused? Oh, we have one more after this. Uh, <laughs> as I often get confused while working on one project. So can you work on multiple projects? I mean, going back to what I said at the beginning, I want NaNoWriMo to serve your writing goals and needs. So I don't like to be restrictive with the rules. Um, I happen to be a writer who uh, this happened to me. I didn't consciously decide on it. But just because I have different um, kind of publishing schedules and I write different types of things like nonfiction and short stuff and novels. So I'm oftentimes jumping between projects. And, and I actually like that because one, it gives me a little bit of a creative break. Um, and then when I can return to the project I left later, I'm, I'm refreshed. You know, I'm more open to it. I have new ideas. So Again, I think I think make it work for you. I think the one thing about juggling a lot of projects is that you sometimes people don't finish any of them. They're constantly going to a new project. So just be aware of that with yourself if you really want to finish something. Um, you know, sometimes it's best not to juggle too many to really focus. You know. Awesome. Our last one is actually not a question, but I think this is a great note to end on. Kara mm. says, this is going to be my first NaNoWriMo. I started prepping by working on an outline using Jessica's Save the Cat structure. I struggle with depression and staying motivated to write. I just wanted to say NaNoWriMo has helped inspire me to get back at it. Oh, wow. That's so meaningful. Um, thank you so much for saying that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's why we exist. That's That's the reason we exist. You know, your story matters. And uh, I hope hope you can keep writing it this November. Um, but also, it's like, you know, it's important to observe who you are and how you're feeling and how to take care of yourself. So, you know, um, make sure that's a priority. Great. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today, Grant. I really appreciate it. I know all of our participants appreciate it. Um, yeah, we've got lots of uh, thank yous coming in. So um, I, I'm sure. So um Thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to NaNoWriMo and everything that happens after. Yeah. Thank you so much, Crystal. And thank you to everybody. I love seeing these messages in chat. Um, and I really appreciate these really thoughtful questions. So happy writing. Get through the money middle. Reach the end. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.